and welcome back to my channel. So today um, is not quite a tutorial. Um, it's more of just a make a journal with me. Um, and I've got some of my supplies sitting here right now. I have made a few journals. Um, I'll actually go get some of the ones that I've made. So I have actually made um, several journals. These aren't all of them, but these are the ones that I have that are blank right now. Um, and I've made um, most of these with binding that you stitch into the side. Um, I did do a flip through of a journal um, like this um, that I, I uploaded the empty flip through, but I have actually used it at this point. Um, so this one is another one where that binding comes in um, sewn onto the spine. Um, and this one I actually made with some of the materials that I'm going to be using today, this blank nice cardstock paper. Um, and then I have one more um, that's a little more like vintage inspired. Um, and I used some lace and some coffee stained paper. Um, and I sewed these signatures also into the um, spine of the book. And then I've made one Coptic bound journal. This one is little, and this is my first Coptic binding project, so it's like not the best. It's a little loosey goosey. Um, but I feel like I did a pretty good job for my first time. I used just regular thread. I know some people use like um, wax thread, but I was just working with what I had. Um, and so today I'm going to be working on a, a cop another Coptic bound journal. And I have uh, fabric covers for all of these, but today for the cover of this journal, I'm actually going to be using some images that I have from an old calendar. Um, and this is a calendar from my church. And every month it just had a different like artistic image um, that is like about a saint or a feast day. Um, St. Ignatius is feast day was actually um, last weekend on my birthday, um, which is kind of fun because my sister actually went to um, one of the Loyola colleges. But I, earlier in the year, was a sponsor for um, my best friend's little sister. I was a confirmation sponsor. We were actually technically both her sponsor because her sister was her sponsor, but she was out of the country. And so I filled in um, physically at her confirmation and I for totally forgot to get her a gift but I decided I would make her a journal using some of the pages from that calendar. So I already cut a few artistic images um, down. Some of them still have like the hole from the calendar loop um, because a lot of them had like you know information and then obviously the hole so they don't like quite fit each other so I'm gonna have to cut them down a little more to make them fit um, but I'm doing images of Mary for all of the sides um, and I have this was the cover um, it's a bit of like a thicker material that I'm gonna be using for the front it's just Mary and baby Jesus and then inside uh, I should know this I want to say this is Lord's and that's Bernadette. But so that's gonna be the front inside cover. And then I'm gonna be using um, this box of paper. I actually got at a thrift store. It's a super awesome thrift store um, in Nashville called Turnip Green Creative Reuse. Um, and it is basically just like a bunch of people donate stuff and then they don't even have a price on anything. It's just pay what you can. Um, and so I got a bunch of really good quality paper um, for not a lot of money and um, it's mostly like white and cream some of it's a little more blue tone there are a few random colored pages um, but yeah so I'm gonna be using this just because it's such nice quality paper I have a few pieces folded but I'm gonna have to like I said I'm gonna have to cut down all these images to be the same size for the cover and then I'll have to cut down the paper to be the same size um, and for the for the actual cover, I'm going to be putting these on to, I guess, pieces of cardboard. I have so much cardboard that I have saved. I really need to use it all. One that I used for these larger journals are actually pieces of cardboard from, like, other types of calendars that come on, like, 
they back it when it comes in like saran wrap just to keep it from bending. So I could use that. I've also used like like inside covers from binders before. So like something like this and that actually it has like a rounded edge already if that is like something you want to go for. I think today, let's see, ooh, I do have these pieces that are already kind of cut down. I think today I'm going to go with probably one of these. I might even cover it with like some black paper because I might make the cover itself bigger and then just have the images kind of like framed around it if that makes sense in black paper. Um, but I, so this, this video isn't a tutorial, but I kind of just wanted to document um, making this because I thought it would be cool and it's a gift um, for somebody special for a special occasion and I thought it would just be cool to time lapse it. So that's what this video is going to be. I'm going to have Avatar The Last Airbender playing in the background um, because that is my favorite show of all time and I've made it my book making show or journal binding show um, just to like inspire me to watch journals or watch journals <laughs> to inspire me to make journals I get to watch Avatar. Um, and it's also like given me an excuse to like watch it in chronological order when a lot of the time I just watch it, you know, whenever whatever episode I feel like watching, um, but there's, you know, it's nice to watch things in the order that they came out because you get the story building better. Anyways, I'm just rambling at this point, um, but I just wanted to give a little introduction to this video and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing that I did um, was just cut down each image to be about the same size. They were all like slightly different sizes. And so I just took some time and cut them down to make them um, pretty much the same size. Of course, I couldn't get it exactly correct, um, but it was as close as I could get it to be. And then a couple of them still had the little hole um, from like the part of the calendar that hung on a hook. And so I just took some pieces of the images that I cut off and I just color matched them the best that I could and taped them over the hole so that it was less noticeable. And then I actually ended up using a piece of cardboard that I didn't even show, um, but it was just thicker cardboard, or it wasn't thicker, it was just like sturdier. Um, and I actually didn't cut the pieces to be the exact size. I left a little wiggle room um, where the spine was because with Coptic binding, the thread gets poked into the covers um, about an inch or so from the spine. I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly an inch, but the point is, is that if I had made it the exact size of the images, I would have been like poking into the images and I just didn't want as much of the um, covers to be covered up um, with the thread. So I used this washi tape, um, it's just plain black washi tape, and I went around the edges of each uh, cover just to give it a clean um, dark edge and then I covered the part of the spine that would be showing on the covers with some black washi tape um, just so that like the cardboard wouldn't be showing and it would be just a clean black um, color behind the images and then I attached the um, images I just used some Mod Podge and I actually need to use different Mod Podge because this is dishwasher safe or it's like dishwasher proof Mod Podge that I uh, bought for a different DIY a few years ago now but it's the only like glue I had so that's what I'm using and I'm just using like a sponge brush um, and yeah sadly some of these had air bubbles but luckily not the cover just because it was a thicker um, material and then here you see me picking out the papers. I had a bunch of papers that I was going through and they all looked the same, but some of them were different tones and some of them were different textures. So I just got, I believe it was 25 um, pieces of paper and I'm just folding them all down the middle um, because thankfully um, they, they fit like that, though I did have to cut off about an inch on the end just because the cover was a little shorter. And while I was doing that, I was just letting the covers press under some books because the glue was making the cardboard bend up a little bit. Um, and I just didn't want them to be um, warped at all while I was creating, um, or while I was binding on the covers, of course.
And when I was done with that, I just got all of the supplies for binding and all of the signatures put together. At first I was going to do 5 and then I decided to do 10, but then I thought that it was two little pages in a signature, so I think I ended up doing like 7 or 8. It was like a random number. Um, but before I could start with binding, I measured um, the spine, if you will, of all the signatures and I just made a mark in the middle and then I think a mark that was like three inches above and below the middle and then one in the middle of that. So I made five different marks and I did the same for the covers too and I made them about an inch from um, the edge of the cover and then I just used a thumbtack to create the holes. Um, it'd probably be better if I used an awl, but I don't have one in my tool bag, um, but I do have plenty of thumbtacks, so that's just what I'm using, um, and yeah, just poking holes in the covers. So now that I have all of the holes poked in the cover and in each of the signatures, I just started um, unraveling a super long piece of black thread. Um, I don't think this is really the thread you're supposed to use for Coptic binding, but it's what I had, so I just worked with what I had. And I was getting started, um, but before I sewed everything down, I decided I might as well put some clear tape around the edge of the covers just to keep the um, images from like peeling up at the edge um, and then also on the spine side it would just give a little more reinforcement to the holes that the thread was going into um, and since this is only my second time Coptic binding I did pull up a tutorial just to give me a refresher course and I used a, a curved needle this time the first time I did not use a curved needle but I knew we had some around somewhere that I saw when I was younger and I had no idea what they were for and here I am now uh, and I'm using them and here's a change of scenery because Jeopardy was on so I moved into the living room to watch Jeopardy while I bound um, and it was nice it was peaceful it was a vibe um, and I think I, I think final Jeopardy was theology which um, was or no it was religion which i'm studying religious studies at college so you know that just made me happy um but yeah i am just going through it going through each signature going through each hole and yeah doing my thing like i said second time copter binding so it's always a bit of a process but you know i get better you get better with practice and now I've moved to a different seat in the same room. This time I was watching Gilmore Girls with my mom, um, but I got my laptop back out just to show me how to finish up and sew on the cover. And I was very excited when I completed this and I paused the show to show it off to my mom. That's how excited I was. <laughs> Alright, so thank you for following along with me as I make this journal. Here is the completed product. Um, I think it turned out pretty dang good. Um, of course, it does still look homemade. The tape is a little... Mm, like, I, I don't think it looks as good because of the tape, but it'll definitely keep the edges more secure. The binding is a little loose, but again, this is the second time that I've ever done Coptic binding. So it was, you know, still a learning experience. Um, and it was the first time I used a curved needle, which did make the process a lot easier. So I was glad I had that, but here is just a final little flip through. So the front cover, um, just Mary and baby Jesus. I think this piece might be called the Madonna and Child. Um, I do have all of the like art, like the names of the pieces um, somewhere. Um, but yeah, inside cover. And then all the pages on the inside are just this really nice thick cardstock. Um, so she could do, um, Honestly, whatever she wants, this could be for art journaling, this could be just for regular journaling, I don't really know what she'll use it for, but 
I am so happy with how it turned out. Thank you for um, watching this process with me. I hope how you, you like how it turned out too. Um, and yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. Bye!